Hello there, and thank you for listening in on today's interview. My name is Paul Miller, and it is my pleasure to have with me today Mr. David Dye. Thanks for being here today, David. My pleasure. David is here today to share a powerful experience he had in the Lord many years ago, a literal heavenly experience. You could say that he has had a taste of, or a glimpse into eternity, or into heaven, and you do not want to miss out on hearing about this experience. So I encourage you to listen on to the fullness of this interview. You will be blessed. Thanks again for being here, David. And um, before we get into the experience, why don't you give us a general background about yourself? Okay, I'm I'm, I'm 54 years old. Um, I got saved. I met the Lord Back in 1976, June of 76, it was about one month after my wife and I, Joan, got married. Uh, she got saved about, about four years later. We've had a great marriage now of uh, over 34 years. We have one son, David, who uh, will be 28 here in uh, November, in about a month from now. Uh, we're we're uh, elders at the Christian Life Church here in Menor, Ohio. Uh, we've been that now for 10 years, I believe, and uh, we love the church. We have an opportunity to be on the worship team with uh, Pastor Watson and uh, really enjoy that, and I really enjoy working with my pastor, Don Nip. And uh, let's give you a little short <laughs> <laughs> a little short interview or short uh, introduction there. Okay. Uh, so um, regarding this experience, um, when, did, when did it happen? When did you have this experience? Well, it's, uh, it's been almost, well, it's actually a little over 28 years ago. Uh, it was back in about the middle of July of 1982. Uh, I know that's a long time ago. Um, some people ask me, you know, why now? You know, mm-hmm. uh, actually, there's probably two reasons why now. Uh, this first one's probably a poor way to illustrate, but maybe you'll get an idea. Uh, when you think of somebody that gets a, a tattoo, you know, when they first get it, the, the colors are real bright and they stand out. And it's, you know, depending on what type of tattoo, I've seen some American flags, eagles, and they, you know, they really stand out. They're, re- they're really brilliant and they, they real define. But as time goes on, the, the colors start to fade and maybe they start to run together. Well, after 28 years, I can honestly say that there's not a day that has gone by that I don't find myself dwelling on what I saw and what I heard. And after 28 years, it's starting to fade just a little bit, and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm kind of concerned that I don't want to forget some of this. And number two is probably the real reason why we're here tonight. Uh, I... You know, lately, I, my, my health has never really been the best. I've, I've fought s- several major physical issues in my life, but lately it just seems like, you know, I'm not boasting, bragging, or complaining, but the things, they just seem to be piling up on me, and it's like, you know, I I guess I'm realizing my mortality. You know, I'm I'm not going to be here forever. Right. And if I'm going to do something for God, I better do it now, not wait for tomorrow, not wait for next week. And I've only shared this with literally a handful of people, uh, and it's, I've, I've been sitting on it all these years and mm. it, it, it hasn't lost its significance with me. It is a very powerful thing. And my feeling and my belief is, is that somebody out there needs to hear this. There's going to be something in this that, that, that we're going to talk about tonight that it will get your attention. Uh, I realize by the title of this this lesson or this this message that I have, uh, my journey to heaven, I know that gets your attention, and I guess it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. And when I see the outline, you know, that we've put together here, uh, you'll, you'll understand why I come up with that, that title. So it's uh, kind of think now is the time to kind of bring it to light and yes. get the message out there for people to hear and, and let it do what it does. Yeah, I, now is the time. I'm, I... It's the timing is right for now. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be honest, you know, I I I thought about this for a long time. I knew that this day would come, and when I realized it, 
that you and I were going to do this tonight that I was really getting excited about it. And matter of fact, all day today, I, I, I was putting everything together, putting the final touches on, and I was real excited about it. And about two hours before we did this, I got scared to death, <laughs> you know, and I was scared that, you know, I, I, I wondered if people think, you know, they, am I losing my mind or am I trying to make myself better than somebody else? And I, 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 let me let me say this, number one, um, I'm no different than anybody else. I'm not special. But I will say this, that I am indeed special because I am I am loved by God, mm -hmm. just as anybody that's listening to this as, as well as you, Paul. You are loved by God. You are special. Uh, you are singled out. God has paid a great price for your freedom. And uh, I... I consider myself greatly blessed because of who I know and, and all that he's done for me. And uh, I really feel that it's, it's time to, to get this out. And I mm. really, you know, I'm, I'm fearful that, you know, some people are just going to think I'm nuts or, you know, there's, there's a whole host of, of <laughs> thoughts that have crossed my mind. But, you know, to be honest, I don't care anymore. You know, they can think what they want to think. I, I need to get this out. And uh, um, I... You know, uh, maybe you can feel what I have felt over these years. Amen. And I, I know I've been excited to be able to sit down with you and hear about it and talk about it. And um, so let's get to let's it. Let's have at it. Okay. <laughs> so why don't you, what was going on in your life at that time when this, what kind of led up to this experience or what was going on at the time when, when this happened? Okay. Uh, this was, uh, what brought this to, to a head was in, uh, it was the middle of July of 1982. My wife, Joan, was pregnant with our one son, David. And uh, this is a separate story altogether, but I, I was afflicted with Crohn's disease, very bad. Um, they say that it can't kill you. Well, I found out that it, it can due to complications mm -hmm. uh, from the disease, uh, I had three sections of my intestine that had to be removed. As a matter of fact, when they cut me open, they found a section that was perforated. Uh, if you put two and two together, uh, I should have gotten peritonitis. I don't know why I didn't. Mm -hmm. My intestines had blocked, and uh, I was getting very sick. A doctor friend of mine, Dr. Zinnia, said I was most likely going into toxic shock. But this will give you an idea where I was at. I was, I was 26 years old. Uh, I was barely 125 pounds. I was very sick with Crohn's disease. Uh, I was a mess. I mean, I had been a Christian now for six years. The Lord had baptized me in the Holy Ghost about uh, five years earlier. But I was really fighting with this disease. And I was in the hospital. I went in, I believe it was July 12th. It was a Monday. Mm -hmm. And the surgery, what they were going to do, they were going to go in there and, and take out these three sections of my intestine. Back then, it was a very serious surgery i think today's technology has has made it a little easier and by the way i this this is a story all on its own the lord touched me about two years later after this surgery i still had not felt any better i still had not put on any weight i still wasn't doing better but the lord touched me in, in a special service one night uh, uh pastor uh, robert mcgee from the probrook church church of god prayed for me and within 15 days or was it no within what was it? Six weeks, I put on 15 pounds. Matter of fact, I ballooned all the way up to, <laughs> barely, I wasn't even 103. I was up to like 180, and, I, and it was good. I was like carrying a weight, but I have not taken a single pill, uh, nothing, since 1982. And wow. uh, it's now 2010, so it's a good testimony for those of you out there that might hear this that are struggling with Crohn's disease or you know somebody that has it, there is hope for you. God has touched me. He has definitely given me a measure of healing. Uh, that is amazing all on its own. Mm. To get back to our, our main story here, I was in the hospital, and they, they operated me on a Monday. Now, within that time frame, it wasn't until Friday, I don't know, Friday noonish, that I was able to know what was going on uh, when I was aware of what was happening i had uh an iv in my neck it was right in my jugular vein i had an iv in my arm i had a catheter i had an iv in my leg 
and I had, my th which was the worst, I had this tube in my nose that went all the way down my throat into my stomach. Mm. And I, was, I really was a mess. It was a very low time in my life. Um, but it was in that time frame that the Lord met me. Uh, I was literally flat on my back. I was uh, as helpless as I've ever been in my life. Uh, you know, we, Joan and I, you know, as typical young couples, you know, we were living paycheck to paycheck. And I, with this sickness, I, you know, I missed a lot of work. And, you know, we were hurting for money. And, you know, we had always had enough. But I didn't have a whole lot to hang on to other than, you know, the Lord himself. Well, it was in this time that, I don't know if it was a dream or a vision. To this day, I don't know. So this happened in the hospital. It happened in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was day. I don't know if it was night. Uh, you know, I'm just going to throw this out there in case one of some of you are wondering. Um, this was not drug-induced. Mm -hmm. uh, this I was not hallucinating. Um, believe me, I just just to clear the air on a lot of this. I just for my own peace of mind, and mm -hmm. and I and I knew that this was something different. Well, here's, this is, this is what happened. It started with someone had me by my right hand and was walking with me, and we were headed towards this destination. Mm -hmm. And although I could not see who it was to my right, I'm, I am assuming that it was an angel, because where I was was no place I had ever been before. It wasn't a fearful place, but it was, uh, uh, it was different. You know, at this point, I didn't know where I was, but it was very clear. And it was, you know, it was obvious that, that he had me. And, and you know, it wasn't forced with anything. He was just walking with me. But he was kind of leading me, and he was taking me somewhere. Now, as we're walking, the very first thing that I see catches my eye off to the left. And as I'm coming up to this, my stomach started to ache. Now, unfortunately, with Crohn's disease, I've had, you know, in the past, I've had a lot of stomach ache. But this was not like your normal stomach ache. My stomach ached for emptiness it was as if i hadn't eaten in months years it it ached because it was so empty and i remember grabbing my stomach i'm like i haven't why is it so empty over there and the lord was getting my attention i'm like what what is this place and i remember looking down it was like i'm looking down over my left shoulder and i'm, I'm looking over and it's it's a vast it's deep and it's like what what is this? And I noticed that although my stomach ached for emptiness, and this is exactly the way the Lord presented to me, and I can still remember just grabbing my stomach. And like, but it wasn't, you know, I know all about stomach pain. You know, it was nothing like that. It was, but it was, it was, it was empty. Like it was just, like, just va a void of anything. That's, that's, that, and that's what, how it got me. But I looked, but it wasn't empty. There were things in there. And the way the Lord presented to me, this is the first scripture that came to me in, in, this, in this dream and this vision that I had. And oddly enough, it was Galatians chapter 5, and I had my Bible open up to this. And oddly enough, it, it's Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, where it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, again,